This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to the program. My name is Rick Renner, and today I'm coming to you from my studio in Moscow, Russia. Is that amazing that we can connect over all of these miles and all this space through the miracle of technology, but not just because of technology, because of amazing partners. Now, I just heard somebody say, okay, there he goes again talking about partners. Why does he always talk about partners? Because partners really are the heroes of this ministry. I wouldn't be talking to you today if a partner had not sent an offering. It was their offering which has enabled this signal to come to you wherever you are on whatever device you're using. Somebody paid for this, a partner. Partners really are the heroes of the ministry. And partner, I want to say thank you to you for everything you do for being a part of what we're doing. And if you've been thinking about becoming a partner, why not do it today? Just go online or give us a call. You will become a partner and you can also ensure that just like somebody gave so the word can come to you, you can do something to make sure the word goes to somebody else. We all have a responsibility to help fulfill the great commission. And whether you go or you help somebody else to go, that is the assignment. And when you become a partner, you help us teach many people the wonderful, life-transforming Word of God. I want to say thank you again, partners, and thank you to those who will become partners. And the moment you become a partner, we're going to send you two books as our way of saying welcome to the family. We're going to send you my book called Life in the Combat Zone and my wife's book, which is called The Gift of Forgiveness. We always send these two books to anyone who becomes a part of the family. So welcome. We're going to get these to you. And I want to say thank you to you in advance for becoming a part of the giving team to support this ministry. And I want to tell you that today we're offering you my series, which is called The Ministry of Angels, How to Activate Angels to Help You Right Now. Angels are available to do a lot for you. First, you need to know what they're available to do. And second, you need to know how to activate their assistance that's what this entire series is about, and it comes with a study guide, so you can read all the information while you see or hear the entire series. And we're offering you two books. One is called Servants of Fire by my friend Joseph Z. Oh, this book is amazing. It's like Angels A to Z. It covers everything about the ministry of angels. It's the most thorough thing I've ever read about angelic ministry. And if you really want to dive deep and understand angelic ministry, please order this book, Servants of fire. But the first book I ever read in my life about angels was by my friend Terry Law, who now is in heaven. But the book was called The Truth About Angels. Wow. When I saw that title, I said, I need to read that book. And the subtitle says, Angelic Encounters from a Biblical Perspective. Well, you know, you're listening to Rick Renner and a biblical perspective is what it's all about with us. What does the Bible tell us about angels? The truth about angels. And if you don't have this book, it will really be an eye opener for you. And I have to mention that this week, I have also told you about our autobiography called Unlikely. And the reason I'm mentioning it is because as I teach on angelic encounters this week, I've told you that several of my own angelic encounters are recorded in this autobiography. So please order this as well. And by the way, when you reach out to us by going online or by giving us a call right now, the number's on the screen. Let us know how to pray for you. Jesus said in Matthew 18, 19, that where two or three of you are gathered together, I'm there. And if you'll just agree together in prayer, I'll do whatever you ask. And my friends, Jesus is here. Jesus is there. He's with us. And we'll get into agreement with you. And Jesus really will do something marvelous for you. He will move to meet your need. But hey, reach for your Bible because we always use the Bible in this program. And today we're going to see that angels make divine announcements and angels release God's divine judgment. But this week we've already seen on Monday that angels are available to meet tangible and physical needs. Then we saw on Tuesday that angels at times can provide supernatural guidance. Then we saw yesterday that angels provide protection and deliverance. And again, today we're going to see that angels make divine announcements and release divine judgment. But let's go back 
to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, which says, Are they angels, not all ministering spirits? Send forth to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. So if you're an heir of salvation, this verse says angels are available to minister to you. In fact, this verse calls them ministering spirits. That word ministering is from a Greek word which describes sacred service. So angels have a sacred ministry. Secondly, it was the same word used in the Old Testament to describe the ministry of priests to worshipers. They were to be available to worshipers to meet their various needs. Well, when you put all that together, it means angels have been assigned the sacred task of ministering to the various needs of those who are heirs of salvation. That means you, and they're available to minister to various needs in your life. But then it goes on to say they've been sent forth from the Greek word apostello, which means they've been dispatched by a very powerful individual who is God. God has dispatched them to minister for them who shall be heirs of salvation. And that word minister is a Greek word which describes highly trained servants. They're polished. They are professional. Their job is to serve those that are gathered at the table and to make them feel like royalty, to meet their every need, their every desire. And now we find that when angels come to serve, they don't do it sloppily. They are highly trained. They're polished. They're cultured. They're professional. And they know how to meet the needs of those that are gathered around the table. And those that are gathered around the table are those that are heirs of salvation, those that have called Jesus the Lord of their life and are born again. If you've never been born again, call us right now and we will pray with you. You'll be born again. You'll be given a seat at the table and angelic ministry will then be available to you. Say amen. But we have seen that God sends angels to meet his people's needs, to strengthen the weary, to give them supernatural guidance. And often it comes through dreams and visions to provide direction and deliverance and protection to carry out superhuman feats and to release divine judgment and to worship. And we have seen in Hebrews 12, verse 22, that there is an innumerable company of angels in the church, innumerable. So why would be we shocked if somebody says they've had an angelic encounter? My friends, there are innumerable angels in the church. We ought to have an encounter with an angel once in a while. But in scripture, we find that angels make divine announcements. They make divine announcements. That does not mean they teach. It does not mean they preach. It does not mean they correct. It does not mean they rebuke. That is an assignment which is given to fivefold ministry and to human beings. Human beings who listen to the Word of God, they study the Word of God, they pray, they digest it, they assimilate it into their system, and then under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, they begin to preach the Word of God My friends, that is a task that is assigned solely to human beings. For me to sit in this chair and speak to you, I spend hours and hours and hours praying, studying, preparing, making sure I really understand that I'm bringing you teaching you can trust. But angels are not teachers. Angels are not preachers. And in fact, if you look at the time of the New Testament all the way to the present, most sects and cults began with some kind of angelic teaching. Angels are not assigned to teach. And if you hear that an angel showed up with a teaching or a preaching subject, my friends, you need to be very leery of that. That is not the assignment given to angels. Instead, angels listen and speak verbatim, word for word, what God has instructed them to speak. I'm not speaking verbatim. I'm speaking from what I have process. I'm elaborating on what God has shown me. But angels do not have that ability. They are repeaters. They're not preachers. Did you hear that? Angels are repeaters. They're not preachers. And once an angel has delivered the message to someone exactly as God dictated it, the angel disappears just as quickly as the angel appeared. Thus, angels are God-sent heavenly messages who make word-for-word announcements. Word-for-word announcements. Now, twice in the entire New Testament, there's a record of an angel who seems to be conversing with an individual. But this is very rare. One is with Zacharias, who was the father of John the Baptist, and the other was the Virgin Mary, of course, who was the mother of Jesus. Jesus. 
But in Mary's case, Gabriel appeared to this young virgin and made a verbatim announcement just as he heard it from the mouth of God that she would give birth to Jesus. And Mary asked Gabriel in Luke chapter 1, verse 34, how shall this be seeing that I know not a man? And Gabriel answered her and clarified that this would be a miraculous birth. You can read that in Luke chapter 1, verse 35. As God's angelic messenger, Gabriel was only permitted to speak verbatim or to make a word-for-word -word announcement of what God had told him to speak, and then he was gone. He disappeared. Even though he was an archangel, and archangels are powerful, his function was to repeat the exact message verbatim that God had given him and nothing more. Again, as humans... We're commanded to teach and preach. And to do that, we've got to pray. We've got to study. We've got to process what we have received. And then under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, elaborate to the best of our ability what we have seen in the Word of God. That's our responsibility. But angels, even with all of their great supernatural abilities, cannot even grasp the idea of sitting down and teaching and preaching. In fact, angels are so amazed at human beings' ability to, ability to teach and to preach, that in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12, we're told that angels hover low to watch the teaching and preaching of the Bible because they're just mesmerized by it. In fact, right now in this studio, there are angels that are hanging low listening to me right now because they can't do what I'm doing. Listen to what the Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 12. Unto whom it was revealed that not unto themselves... But unto us they did minister the things which are now reported unto you by them which have preached the gospel unto you with the Holy Ghost sent down from heaven, which things the angels desire to look into. And when the Bible says the angels desire to look into, it means they're hanging low, their necks are outstretched, they're peering with all of their might to watch and to listen. Even as I sit here today, they're hanging low thinking, wow. The ability to sit in that chair, to look in that camera and speak the Word of God, to elaborate and to process, they don't have that ability. They're repeaters. They're not preachers. Angels are repeaters. They're not preachers. Wow, that is amazing. But the Bible is full of illustrations of angels who came to make a verbatim word-for-word -word announcement. For example, in Luke 1.11, it tells us that an angel announced, announced, to Zacharias that he and his wife would give birth to a son whose name would be John the Baptist. In Luke 1.26, it tells us Gabriel announced word for word verbatim what he had heard from God, the birth of Jesus to Mary. In Luke chapter 2, verses 9 to 14, it records that a multitude of angels announced verbatim what God had said to them about the birth of Jesus, and they announced it to the shepherds. In Matthew 28, 5 to 7, Mark 16, 6 and 7, and Luke 24, 5 to 7, it testifies that the angels announced verbatim Jesus' resurrection. In Acts chapter 1, verse 1, it says two angels appeared to the apostles at the time of Jesus' ascension, and they announced, they repeated exactly what they'd been told to say, that Jesus would return in the same manner as they had seen him go into heaven. In 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 and 17, it foretells that the voice of the archangel will announce the moment when believers will be caught up together to meet those who have been resurrected to meet the Lord in the air. And the book of Revelation is filled with angelic announcements that initiate judgments upon the earth and its unbelieving inhabitants. There's just one instance in the Bible that seems to refer to an angel who actually preaches. But when you dive a little deeper, he's not preaching. Let me show you. In Revelation 14, 6 to 7, the Bible says, And I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth. Well, it sounds like this angel is preaching. It goes on to say, And to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of His judgment has come, and worship Him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of the waters. But the word preach in this context would be more properly translated to proclaim or to announce. This was not an angel who was preaching from his own heart. He was making a verbatim, word-by-word -word announcement. Remember, angels are repeaters. They're not preachers. 
And the role of angels is not to teach. It is not to rebuke. It's not to correct or to preach. Their job is to deliver divine announcements. And I'm going to give you a story from my own life. Just before I left the university, I was at a moment in my life when I was really seeking the face of God about my future and what I was to do with my life. And I was living in an apartment. This was before I was married. And I laid down one day to take a nap on the couch. I reached up, I turned off the lamp and laid there to go to sleep. But I couldn't go to sleep because I felt a presence in the apartment. I looked around the room. I couldn't see anybody, but yet I felt such a strong presence there. And suddenly, not far from me, materialized right in front of me what looked like a man. Well, if you read the scripture, sometimes the angels appear as people. There's not an example anywhere in the Bible of a female angel. They always appear as men. I sat straight up, looked, and asked myself, who is this? I didn't say it. I just thought, who is this? And that man answered me. He never opened his mouth. It was nonverbal communication. And this was a man from the presence of the Lord. It was an angel. And he began to speak to me about my ministry And he began to repeat what had been said to him. It was verbatim. There was no conversation. It was a word-for-word announcement about me having an end-time ministry. It gave me explicit details about my future. That angel repeated verbatim what he had been told to say to me. And just like he came, he left. The moment he was finished making this divine announcement to me about my ministry and my future, he was gone. There was no room for conversation or elaboration because angels are repeaters. They are not preachers and they make divine announcements, but they also release God's judgment. There are many examples in the Old and New Testament that demonstrates angels are the ones who release God's judgment. But one of the clearest examples is found in Acts chapter 12, verse 22 and 23, where it states, that the local people began to worship Herod as a god, and Herod liked it, so he encouraged it. And as a result, we read in Acts 12, verse 22, and immediately the angel of the Lord smote him because he gave not God the glory, and he was eaten of worms and gave up the ghost. The verse clearly says he was eaten of worms, which, by the way, is a fact that is very well established in historical writings of that time. But Herod's death was brought about as a result of a judgment that was released on him by an angel. That's amazing. But if you look at Revelation chapter 7, verse 1, we also read about four angels that are sent to release judgment upon the earth and upon the sea. In Revelation chapter 8, Through chapter 11, we read about seven angels who sound seven trumpets that release seven judgments upon the earth. When you read Revelation chapter 14, verses 17 to 20, we read about an angel that swings a sharp sickle on the earth that releases great wrath. When you read Revelation chapters 15 to 16, seven angels pour out judgment of Seven out of seven bowls onto the earth and its inhabitants. Angels release judgment. And in fact, if you read about the rapture of the church in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, it says that the voice of the archangel will sound and the trumpet will blast. That trumpet will be blasted by an archangel. That word trumpet, the Greek word salpinx, describes a war cry or the blast that the battle has begun. And my friend, the moment the church is released, that blast will initiate the outpouring or the release of divine judgments upon the earth. So in today's program, we have seen that angels make divine announcements and it is angels that release divine judgments. Now, How do you release these things in your life and why do you need them? Well, first of all, we're told in Psalm 103, verse 2, Bless the Lord, ye his angels, that excel in strength, that do his commandments, hearkening unto the voice of his word. Well, in my own personal example, I was seeking the face of God about my future. I was even quoting scriptures to the Lord about speaking to me and revealing to me his plan. And those scriptures activated angelic ministry 
and I received a word-for-word announcement from the mouth of an angel. I really did. By the way, that's recorded in our autobiography called Unlikely. And now we also find that angels hearken to the voice of his commandments. My friends, you don't need to ever get into the judgment business. If somebody is giving you trouble, you just begin to quote the scriptures about God dealing with your enemies. And the moment you begin to quote the scriptures, the angels will hearken to the voice of that word and they'll go to work. And angels themselves will deal with your enemies. You don't need to ever get into the judgment business. Keep your heart pure, keep your heart free, and ask God to deal with your enemies according to the scriptures. And when you quote the word of God, it will activate this particular ministry of angels on your behalf. My friends, angels are available to do so much for you. And according to Hebrews chapter 1, verse 14, it is their sacred assignment It is their sacred task to minister to the various needs of those that are the heirs of salvation. And when they show up, they don't show up to sloppily serve you. They're highly trained, cultured, polished, professional servants. They've come to serve those that are seated around the table. And my friends, that's you and me because we've called Jesus the Lord of our life. And if you are an heir of salvation, you qualify for angelic ministry And by quoting the Word of God, you activate their amazing service to you. Well, this week we've covered a lot. We have one more day. Tomorrow is going to be good. But I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Did you know angels have been assigned to assist you and that they're available right now at this very moment to help you if you know how to activate their help? Rick Renner has experienced angelic help. And in this anointed, powerful five-part series, Rick wants to show you how angels can meet your physical needs and provide you with strength, how angels can provide supernatural protection and deliverance for you, how angels are often dispatched to deliver vital information and to make divine announcements, how angels are available to perform superhuman feats for you. This is what angels will do for you if you know how to activate their help. This new five-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $11. But wait, we're also offering the book Servants of Fire by Joseph Z and The Truth About Angels by Terry Law. Rick says these are possibly the two best books ever written on the subject of angels and what they are sent to do for believers who know how to activate their help. Servants of Fire is a fabulous power-packed book, and it can be yours for just $22. The book, The Truth About Angels, will equip you to know how to call on angelic help when it is needed, and it can be yours for just $20. Order the bundle of the series, The Ministry of Angels, How to Activate Angels to Help You Right Now, and the book, Servants of Fire by Joseph Z, and The Truth About Angels by Terry Law. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. My friend, I want to tell you something exciting. You know, over three decades that my family and I have lived in the former Soviet Union, God has opened a lot of effectual doors for the Word of God and for the ministry. But recently, a door opened unlike any other door, and we're walking through it. Several years ago, we became the owners of a new satellite network that is called GNC, the Good News Channel. And it broadcasts around the world 24 hours a day, seven days a week into 83 nations of the world. But now we have received remarkably a license from the Russian government, the first Christian organization to ever receive this license that gives us the ability to take the signal of our network into every home in Russia through GNC, our network, and you can be a part of that. If you're already a part of our giving team, thank you. But if you'd like to be a part of this giving team, we invite you to join us. We need you. People are crying out for answers, and together we, and you working together, we can really make a difference in somebody else's life. My dear friend, I have had such a good time this week talking to you about the ministry of angels. And it's very unusual for me to speak from my personal experience and talk about my own personal angelic encounters. But this week I've told you about three experiences I've had with angels. Why would anybody be surprised about us having an encounter with an angel? We're told in Hebrews 12, 
22 that in the church there is an innumerable company of angels and they have been sent to minister to me and to you according to Hebrews chapter 1 verse 14. It is their sacred assignment to minister to the various needs of those who are the heirs of salvation. And if you're saved, that's you. You've got a seat at the table. And angels have been sent forth to minister to you. So my friend, you just need to activate their ministry. And you do that by declaring the word of God. They hearken to the voice of God's commandments. The moment they hear the word, bam, they move. They begin to act. That's how you activate angelic ministry. But I want you to order my entire series, which is called The Ministry of Angels, How to Activate Angels to Help You Right Now. Do you need help? Angels are available to help you right now. You need to know how they can help you. That's why I want you to have this series, which comes with the study guide. And right now we're also offering you the book by Joseph Z, which is called Servants of Fire. The back of the book says, Deploying God's Angelic Army. There's a whole army available to help you. You just need to know how to deploy them. And we're also offering you the book by Terry Law, which is called The Truth About Angels, Angelic Encounters from a Biblical Perspective. There's a lot of crazy stuff on the internet. I know that because I look at it from time to time just to see what's out there. It's amazing, some of the nutty stuff on the internet. My friends, we need to have a biblical perspective of everything we believe and everything we embrace And you need to know what the Bible says about angels. And that's why I want you to order Terry's book called The Truth About Angels. By the way, you can order all these things by going online or you can call the number on the screen. And when you call that number or when you go online, would you let us know how to pray for you? We really want to pray for you. And Father, we thank in the name of Jesus that you hear us right now. And Father, I pray for my friend. Lord, if there's an innumerable company of angels in the church, And Lord, I pray for those angels to go to work for my friend to do their angelic ministry for them. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow. But remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, where the word of a king is, there is power. If you've never received Jesus as your Savior and Lord, now is the time for you to experience a new life Jesus has to give you. Pray this prayer with me right now. Lord, I repent of my sin and receive you as my Savior and Lord. Wash away my sin and make me completely new. I thank you that my sin is removed and Satan no longer has any right to lay claim on me. I faithfully promise that I will serve you as my Lord for the rest of my life. Amen. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.